There's some mindfulness meditation traditions that tell you when they talk about jhana. First thing they say is, watch out. It's dangerous. You're going to get attached. And this is their rationale for telling you not to develop jhana, not to get into strong concentration. But they're missing an important point. One, of course, is that jhana is part of the path. The Buddha didn't teach a, op, an optional eighth, eighth factor to the path. It's right there. In fact, the Buddha said it's the heart of the path. And you do want to get attached to it. Not forever. But you want to have a sense of feeling at home with jhana. This is where the mind will go. As John Fuang used to say, you have to be crazy about the meditation in order to do it well. And part of what he meant was that you want to get really interested in the breath and really learn how to savor the breath. Learn how to find a real pleasure there and hold on to it. Because you're going to need to use that pleasure in order to overcome your attachment to sensual pleasures, your sensual, sensuality in general, in other words, sensual thinking. So as you work with the breath, ask yourself, what here is something that would be really worth appreciating? And often it helps to slow down, not necessarily slow down the breath, but slow down your mind. This is a part of the mind that says, well, let's get through this, and then we'll go on to the next step, and then the next. You don't really pay attention to what you're doing while you're doing it. You've got your eye down at the end of the path. Or at least the next step. So learn to settle back a bit and say, how about this breath? How can I squeeze the most pleasure out of this breath? And it involves having an appreciative state of mind. So yeah, it really does feel good to be breathing. If you're not sure about that, hold your breath for a while until it starts getting uncomfortable, and then that first breath that comes in, you say, ah, yes, that's what a comfortable breath feels like. That's simply because it's been coming in and going out for so long, and so often we take it for granted, and our attention moves off to something else. So those mindfulness methods that have you appreciate, say, the taste of a raisin, the taste of a cup of tea. They're right in one sense. Appreciate the little things you've got. They're wrong in the sense that you don't want to be appreciating sensual pleasures. You want to be learning how to appreciate the sense of pleasure that comes from simply inhabiting your body as you sense the body from within. It's called a pleasure of form. It differs from sensual pleasures, and sensual pleasures have to do with your thoughts about sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations, in other words, the things that come and touch the body. Whereas this is different. This is the body in and of itself, as you feel it from within, what they call proprioception. Learn how to get your center of gravity in here, instead of pointing out or pointing up ahead. If you think of focusing a camera, somehow you could take the focal length of the lens and move it inside the lens itself. That's the kind of focus you want right here in the body, as you allow yourself to be surrounded by the breath, surrounded by the sensation of breathing. Think of the breath as a whole body process. And explore aspects of the breath. And John Lee talks about the different kinds of breathing. The fascinating part about his instructions are his instructions on dealing with the breath energies in the different parts of the body, which often causes us to overlook the fact that he spends a lot of time talking about how there's long breathing, long in, long out, short in, short out, but there's also long in, short out, and short in, long out. So learn how to become a connoisseur of the length of your breathing, or a connoisseur of the depth of your breathing. Take some time. Here it is, we've got a whole hour. And there's the part of the mind that says, well, let's get through the whole hour and then we'll go on to something else.
Don't listen to that part of the mind. Say, let's inhabit this hour. Let's inhabit this moment. And allow our awareness to settle back into the body. And get a sense of what's the right amount of pressure, the right amount of space to give to these sensations, and allowing yourself to savor them. The more you can appreciate the breath, and the easier it's going to be to say no to sensual thinking. The easier it will be to say no to anger, lust, greed, jealousy, fear. So this is a skillful pleasure to get attached to. And don't be afraid of getting attached. Don't be afraid of this pleasure. Think of the Buddha after he had spent all those years self-torture, trying to run away from pleasure, and realized he was going to die without having achieved the state of deathless happiness that he wanted. So the question is, is there, would there be another path? And he thought about the time when he had spontaneously, as a child, entered into the first jhana. And he asked himself, could that be the path? And something inside him said yes. But the next question is, why am I afraid of that pleasure? Why am I afraid of that pleasure? It's blameless. So he had to convince himself not to be afraid of it. So some people are afraid of the pleasure are afraid of appreciating the pleasure of the breath for fear of doing something wrong. Sometimes people even say, I don't deserve this kind of pleasure. Or they're afraid that if they get attached to it, then it's going to be taken away from them, as has happened with so many other pleasures in life. So you've got to learn how to counteract that thinking. Here it is. It's your breath. You have every right to breathe in and enjoy it as much as you want. It's not like the pleasures outside, where people can take them away. You're not borrowing it from anybody else. Remember that image the Buddha had of sensual pleasure as being like borrowed goods. No, this is not borrowed. This is your sense of the body, your sense of your body. So you have every right to enjoy it. And you're not being selfish, and you're not being unresponsive to other people when you enjoy this pleasure. In fact, the more you can enjoy this pleasure, the less you'll be leaning on them. So it's a pleasure with few drawbacks. I mean, it is inconstant. It requires work. It has to be maintained. But it's maintained for a purpose, for helping you have a lever to pry yourself away from your fascination with sensual thinking, and to prepare the mind for deeper discernment. And the more you can appreciate it, the more you can indulge in it, to borrow the Buddhist term, the more it's going to be able to perform its function. So take some time. Remember that an important part of the path is learning to be fully present to the path as you follow it. This is one of the drawbacks of the image of a path, thinking of it some place you're going to have to go, so you've got to do the next step and the next step if you're ever going to get to the end. But Dogen, the Zen master, had a good teaching one time. He said that the two duties with regard to the path and with regard to cessation of suffering, in other words, realizing the cessation and developing the path, they're one. This is a good strategic way of thinking. In other words, in the act of developing the path, you're going to realize the cessation of suffering. So you don't have to look anywhere else. Instead of having one eye on the breath and one eye down the road, you focus both eyes right here. Because the goal, when it's, when it's found, is also going to be right here. It's no place. No, no place else. It's not 30, 40 yards down the, down the way. It's right here. Simply learning how to pay careful attention right here. That's how you 
are going to be able to detect it. And so what does careful attention mean? You learn how to savor things, savor the pleasure that comes from having a mind that can settle down and be with the breath. So take your time to give full attention right here. That way you get to see things you haven't seen before. And in the meantime, you'll be able to experience a pleasure that you haven't experienced before. It is fabricated. It's put together. But then the whole path is put together. When the Buddha talks about the highest dharma, he says there's the unfabricated and there's the fabricated. And the highest of the fabricated dharmas is the path. The unfabricated dharma is dispassion. But the path is the best thing you can put together. So even though it's put together, don't look down on it. Learn how to put it together well and then savor it. The more you can appreciate what you've done, the better the job you're going to do. It's like learning how to play a musical instrument. If you don't know how to listen to yourself as you play, it's going to be mechanical. But if you listen to it and learn how to enjoy it as you play, other people will learn how to find that your music is more enjoyable too. You develop greater and greater skill. This is one of the reasons why we chant together as a group. If you chant just with your mouth, it doesn't sound particularly good. If you chant with your mouth and your ears, in other words, listen to the group, it's more enjoyable. And you get better at it. And then you transfer that lesson to the breath. Learn to listen to the breath, savor the breath as you're focusing on it. Allow the different tight parts of the body to open up to the potential of pleasure for the breath. And that way you become more fully present. Your attention will become more appropriate. Your sensitivity will become more sensitive. And it's through developing your sensitivity that your discernment grows. So this is a pleasure with a purpose, and it requires that you appreciate it so that it can serve that purpose well. So don't be afraid of getting attached to it. As John Fung used to say, that kind of attachment is easy to peel away. But his fear was, when he was working with the students, that they wouldn't learn how to get attached to it to begin with. Which would mean, of course, that they just go slipping back to their old ways. So don't be afraid of jhana. Don't be afraid of appreciating it. Don't be afraid of being attached to it. That attachment is an essential part of the path.